Welcome everybody to another edition of Kicking It. We're in Texas for this one. We're in your home state, Clint, and you hooked us up with uh, one of your favorite rappers, one of the most influential figures in the rap game, Trade the Truth. We appreciate you coming through. Thank you so yeah, much. That's love, that's love. Uh, we know that essentially you're doing this out of love for Clint, right? Because yeah, it's not about the soccer for you, it's about Clint. <laughs> I'm interested, you meet Clint for the first time white boy soccer player thinks he can rap. What was your first impression of him? <laughs> I didn't look at it like that, but it was, um, again, like he said, it, it was already a, a genuine love there. You know, one thing about Texas, we support Texas no matter what, and you gotta realize he's one of the biggest athletes in the world that's coming out of Texas. So how did, you, how did your guys connect, first of all? Because I know you go back a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, the way it connected is kind of a sad story, but like I did this Don't Tread track with Big Hulk uh, for Nike when I was with the, the national team. Right. And then, unfortunately, like six months or so after we did it, um, he, he, he passed away. And my boy Shahadi, who got connected with Big Hulk to even like do that track, he was at the funeral, then he, he bumped into Trey. And through them kind of connecting, then it's like, oh, that's what's up. Like, that's one of my favorite rappers I listened to before the, before the game and stuff. And then while I was in England, there was like another thing that uh, Nike was doing. It was like a super fly thing, uh, like commercial. And I was like, man, I got to get like Trey on there. Like, that's that's what I listen to. That's what I get motivated. It reminds me of home when I play. So through, through all that, that's how we connected and just kind of stayed in touch, whether it was like doing stuff for, for Trey Day, where underprivileged kids giving them school supplies, um, for the year uh, or, or just, you know, just checking in, see how everything's going. So what I appreciate about, appreciate about Trey is just anytime you, you hit him up, he's, he, he's there for you. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, um, Big Hawk was like my older brother, you know, we mm -hmm. were real, real close. And I still deal with Shahadi to this day. Shahadi was determined to make sure we kept it going and he connected me and Clint. And it's just, it's been love ever since, you know, like, whether it be random calls in the middle of the night to check on him and his kids or him check on mine. Or we just always been there with each other. And um, then when he got me to doing the game and the other stuff, that was even dope. You know, anytime he called me, it's, it's done. That's what's up. Even with this shit, I've been up almost 48 <laughs> hours. And you see, I got on this plane to make sure we I appreciate get you. for him. Yeah. You know, uh, th you mentioned the track, Don't Tread, right? D have you heard it? Yeah, of course. Yeah? Yeah. How do you rate him in the rap game? No, he, he, <laughs> Clint, Clint can rap. I mean, they, you he know, can flow, he, right? Yeah, he can rap. Don't let nobody tell you different. <laughs> okay. I'll say she's got some respect. Some respect yeah. 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 He's, being, yeah. he's being nice. I mean, there's obviously no, levels no, he to can, it, he but. Can rap. Uh, you know. No lie, I tell you, if it was bad, I'd be like, nah, bro, we need to redo that. <laughs> you know what? On that note, Mo thinks he can rap. And Mo has a track he wants to play for you. OK. I'm Don't right. you? Hey, uh, you getting quiet now, huh? Yeah. Oh, you want to hear it? Uh, I mean, listen, this is, this is. You tell him the truth. Hey, tell him the truth. This is like, yeah, this is tell years ago, bro. This is, this is like. Uh, well, yeah. He didn't ask he for that. Say it all he just that. said, play it. I'm just giving a disclaimer. This is like 2000 and. He mean, didn't ask for the year, just play it. <laughs> yeah. oh, man. Turn it up. <laughs> All right. Hello, someone stepped in the club. Mm. Who said it's BB? Hit me to the O. Yeah, that's who I be. be. Dressed to be pressed, looking fresh as can be. There's only one room for me, and that's the VIP. Nah, they ain't gonna act cold, man. They just gonna jam. Yeah. Yeah. They gonna I'm just saying, saying M to like, the o. hey. It ain't, it's not bad. It ain't bad. <laughs> Nah, I can't I'm saying I'm gonna ride that. around listening yeah, to it. It's not, it's not necessarily my But like my I said, this was like, it's not bad though. This was in college. This was like two thousand and damn what I, I, I think you were going for the ladies' man with that. that <laughs> hey, you hey, spot on. still going for that. <laughs> that was that was what it was. Oh, yeah, that was the vibe he was going for. Trey, so what kind of sports were you around mostly? Like, is there a sport that you were attracted to that you say, hey, I'm gonna follow this? And when you finally got to see soccer, when you learned about it through Clint, what were you thinking about soccer? Um, I think, I, the, you know, crazy thing is I'm supportive of the city, I'm supportive of the state, and I'm supportive of my homeboys. So it's like I've dealt with a little bit of all sports because you, I'm close to so many different athletes, so I naturally just support them, you know? What I did learn was soccer was another world, man. And um, believe it or not, I believe after we did that game, maybe a 
maybe um, a year or two after, I just start seeing soccer everywhere. I mean, it, it started even from the the video game, just seeing a, a bunch of homies playing it, to a lot of rappers starting to really try and get involved. I believe um, my bro Harden invested yeah. mm -hmm. in the uh, Dynamo yeah. too, so there's definitely a, a lot going on. So I, if I ain't mistaken, wouldn't that be one of the, that in baseball, one of the highest paid sports? There's money in it, that's for sure. In soccer, yeah, it was, it's, I, I mean, it's soccer definitely, and baseball. It's definitely huh? getting up there, but I mean, I'd say probably, you know, football, baseball, basketball, but so soccer's, I'd say soccer's above hockey and stuff like that in terms of like well, D. In terms of pay? Wait, hold up, are we talking saying, internationally? Yeah, I'm not saying payments to y'all, I'm saying that that gross, that make a lot of money. I oh, think. that's what you yeah, mean. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I believe in terms of soccer. The money, that, the money that's brought in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Globally, yeah. I mean, you factor players. in Saudi Arabia, then yeah. yeah. We <laughs> I mean, it, it, ML, I mean, the, Saudi Arabia money is like, different. Like differences is like, what's the highest paid player in MLS? Is like twelve million or something? In like fourteen, I think. Fourteen. Okay, but then you think about. Highest paid. NBA. I mean, Messi. Whatever the, his deal is, yeah. is crazy. But you, you, got a you think about deal. Ronaldo. Yeah, his is Messi is way more than fourteen. Yeah, yeah. he got a different type of deal. Yeah, and then you think like, about Neymar's on twenty five mil a week then, in Saudi. Yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo. You say it was so what? not twenty five to two point five. I said what? <laughs> <laughs> For a second, I said, did I hear? That? I was like, well, I didn't know that. Damn, two point five mil a week. That's crazy. Mm. What probably what Mbappe makes? Yeah, it's it's up there with them. Mm. They legs and feet got to be super insured. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you mentioned kind of like hitting Clint up ever since you guys have met <clears throat> here and there. You, you guys will reach out to one another and check in on one another. Oh, always. Though. But that seems like that, that, that's just you. That's inherent to you, right? Because it just seems like you focus on relationships and you maintain relationships with whoever that, that is. I meet a lot of people in this industry, but I don't keep in touch with a lot of people. I'm bad at that. Yeah, I think, man, because I, I think First and foremost, just being down to earth and being me, like I was. I would say I think a lot of people don't really know, like everything that 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 he does, and so that's why I was happy to have you on the show to give you your flowers. Because, I mean, there's not a lot of people that that do those things. Like he's in the water, like saving people's river, lives during yeah. like hurricanes and stuff like that. Like really making sure people are good. You right? know, the, the the crazy thing is people don't so social media right um i formed my social media account to where i'm able to plant seeds in people as opposed to me doing things to go viral or to get attention we used our platform to show the world what's really going on and i think people appreciated that and valued that more than anything because you can see what you see on the news but you also got to remember the news not going to the low income areas and and things of other sorts and as we showed that we got a lot of people help we helped a lot of people but also in the process you know some people do seek attention so for us it was a win-win right so i can honestly say i made it cool to give back yeah. you know and um mm. with that being said like I, I mastered showing people what really goes on and show people how you can help people because a lot of people think you can only help people with money Money, mm. is, that's definitely a part, but that's not the main part. Sometimes just being that shoulder, being something, somebody or, or something that they can lean on or even just get it out to can, can help change lives, you know? What's the motivation for you? Is it faith-based? Is it about like legacy and what you're creating in terms of, like you said, planting seeds for other people to continue in the same kind of vein? Or is it like the human connection, those moments where you speak to somebody on the real and they well, share with you and you? I, I think it's all the above. I mean, when you you raise a believe in God, I mean, I don't, how can I, let me say this. So I used to, me and T.I. argue all the time with my brother. Um, and he would always tell me, man, the stuff you do outside of music is way bigger than anything else. And we used to, you know, we would argue, because I'd be like, nigga, don't try and make me stop rapping. Like, I, <laughs> like that's, not what you, I, that's what I love doing. He's like, nah, you, you don't get it, bro, it's bigger. You, know you enjoy that responsibility, or does it ever weigh heavy? Um, At this point, 
I feel bad if I don't get if I don't get there to help somebody. I it'll probably burn uh -huh. me up inside. So it's definitely a gift and a curse. Um, the good thing is with my family and my kids, they um, they understand because say if it is a hurricane happening or if it is flooding or something that's going on, my stuff will be at the door waiting for me. And you know, for for them, it's like, I, I didn't understand at first, but then for them, it's people come up to them all the time, like, man, your daddy a hero. We love your pops. And, and that definitely give me the drive. And the crazy thing is, I can't even really be mad, like, because my son Houston, right? I named one of my sons Houston. Um, I get pissed at him sometimes because we, we <laughs> go places and he just give all this stuff away. They're like, bro, like, what is you doing? <laughs> but then I have to think back, like, I do the exact same uh -huh. thing. So I think it's naturally just, it's in them. That's not uh -huh. something that we plan on doing. I mean, our heart is just our heart. My daughter's the exact same way, so. People scared of you? Uh, I, I definitely believe they could be at times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, good. And you know, and that's the crazy thing. Anybody who really know me, they know I got one of the biggest hearts. Mm -hmm. My only only time you're gonna get me to go there, you have to push me there mm -hmm. to to make me react. At the end of the day, just leave me alone. What about the young trade the truth when you're trying to come up and did you have barricades? Because I, I know mm -hmm. '98, you so finally look, made it. The barricades that I went through as a as an artist, you could never imagine. Um, and I've been through a lot. Just you know, just as an artist, as a person, just as a young trait. But again, everything that's going on is shit that, that will make a person tap out, give up, or, or just be over with. And every time it gets hard and hard, I come out on top way more, you know? You believe and that's that's I know. It gotta be. Mm -hmm. What else, I mean, what else is it gonna be? That's one thing about me. If it's something I believe, I'm gonna stand up and I'm, I'm not backpedaling. It's just gonna be what it's gonna be. And whatever come with that, I'm prepared for that, you know? I have a question on that, because you guys as athletes, the level that you've made it to gives you a platform, right? Yeah. And it also gives you a financial uh, level that a lot of other people don't reach. When you're hearing Trade the Truth talk about giving back to the community or talking about making a stand, how keenly do you feel that burden that this is a responsibility I have to, given it, where I've taken my, my me, career me to? Me personally, it makes me feel bad, because I'm not doing nothing as much as Trey's doing. Mm. But, but you know something I want to say say this, not to cut y'all, because I want you to finish. I hate that question. Why? Only why. I, I, mean, I don't say it with judgment. Right, the only reason why, right? Because you know, I can do something, and then people be like, man, well, I don't understand. Such and such got this amount of money, why they not doing it? It's like. I feel like we shouldn't force nobody to do nothing, you know? And, you get and called no, to do it. Yeah, you have like, that feeling. No, but privilege yeah. carries responsibility, right? Uh, in, in some cases, because, you know, man, you, you know the, the main thing why a lot of stuff happen in the world and people don't get help because they feel like if it doesn't affect me directly, it's none of my business. Mm -hmm. And are they wrong to feel that? If they were me, I would say yes. But are they really wrong? I can't say that. So I, I don't, I be real big on, just because I'm doing it don't mean the next person have to do it. The people who genuinely are doing it or who God may put in their heart to do it, when they see me doing what I'm doing, it'll, mo it'll motivate the right ones to do it. And sometimes it don't necessarily, it, it doesn't take somebody with money. Some of the people who can help the most probably don't have the money. I agree happens. with you. It doesn't take somebody, like my father, my, my dad died at, at Christmas. You guys know that, yeah. right? And 500 people turned up to his funeral and I found out about people that he had uh, bought cars for. My, my dad didn't have money, but uh, he was a generous person, right? And there was a lot that I found out that he had been doing for the community that me and my mom didn't know about. He just did things quietly, right? Which I respect so much and it made me question myself. And I think that's a good thing, right? That you have somebody in your life that you look at and you go, damn, am, am I really doing enough? Am I having yeah. an impact in a positive way? Because ultimately, that's what you want to do, We can always right? do more. But, the, but, but all I would we say, all going off of what Trey is saying is like, there's a time and place for it, right? You'll get that calling to, to do more and do it because you got that, that calling to do it, not doing it because being like, oh, I need to do more because it's a good look. But still, either way, you're, you're helping people. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, like, 
But my situation, like having six kids, it's like all hands on deck right now, keeping them alive. Just and, trying to help yourself. You know, just trying to survive, right? But the thing is, is like, at some point, you know, I, I, I think there is gonna be that calling for me and to, to, to do more and to like give back and, and, do, and do it in the right way that, that, feels, that feels right and authentic. You know, it's like religion, right? If someone's telling you, you gotta be this, you gotta, you're not gonna, but if you see someone walking a certain way, someone's happy and someone if doing you feel good, convicted, you're like, what's, right. what's going on with them? Tell yeah. me what's, what's your secret, you know what I mean? I think it's things that like that, by example, is what makes the most impact. So that's why I say that's the reason we do what we do with our platforms, because you motive. You have to realize, man, a real friend and a real brother is only gonna motivate you. It's not gonna make you, it's not to make you feel guilty or, because truth be told, do I feel I could do more? Nah, let's just say this, what you would watch people do with $10 million, I would probably be able to do that shit with them to four or 500,000. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? Because I know how to get in it and, and make it work. Can we clarify Trey Day? Because I, I feel like my original understanding was that it, it was a day that the city gave to you and first, to honor you, right? But you kind of turned it into holiday. a community thing. Is that right? So, actually, Trey Day is more than one day, man. That's, you I'm got multiple days? Oh, I got seven days it's outside of Trey Day. Yes, yeah, damn near a week. And I got a Trey Day in Milwaukee. Um, okay. But Trey Day originally was just to recognize me for all the stuff I've been doing over the years. But again, me being me. I switched it and made it not about me and made it about a day for the city and just for people in need. Mm. So even though people celebrate me, they really coming out there and we doing what needs to be done for the town. You know what I'm saying? So How, how do you feel about being celebrated? Because somebody like you who says, I, I don't really see myself as big as I am, all of that, like I'm not good at recognizing that. Do you feel comfortable or uncomfortable with that idea? Uh, I think both, right? Like, when I got the Billboard Award, I was the, I believe I was the second ever to get the Change Maker Award. Mm -hmm. But me being me, as they telling me, there's like, all right, cool, it's an award, <laughs> but I, it just depends on what I got going on. It's not really registering to me, but when I actually took the time and I went out there and the impact of how it went, you gotta think, like I was introduced um, by one of the Jonas Brothers then, uh, Mama Tina, which is Beyonce Mama, you know, she actually the one who brought me, but then, on top of that, you even have them having a one-on-one -on -one interview with Dave Chappelle speaking about me. Like, it's just to, stuff like that touch your heart to see how even people that you just genuinely love really feel about you. But stuff like that just, I, I sometimes I really don't be realizing how, how big it is, you know? I tell people all the time, I don't care about no award. I'm gonna do it regardless. So just just like <clears throat> sitting here and just taking in everything and getting getting more, familiar with you to just going even deeper on that question about the award, right? It almost feels like, and correct me if I'm wrong, because like you just said, you don't really even fully appreciate the value of awards until you were actually there and seeing the impact to other people. Is it more impactful for you to see, you were talking earlier about your kids, how your son Houston, straight away, he just goes into a situation and he's giving everything away. Your daughter, similar, same, uh, same cup in the same cloth. Does that, <clears throat> is that more, Important to you? Yeah, that, I mean, I, I get, yeah that, that's a definitely a happy feeling, right? So, um, my my son, Nico, right, um, he's disabled. Um, and i never forget, like, I don't know, I've always just been a leader with a lot of things. Cause if you go look at, it's, if you go look at interviews, right, I was probably one of the, the first few. I wouldn't, I, I'm not necessarily gonna say I'm the very first, but definitely one of the first couple that would go on tour or doing things and my kids will be in the middle of an interview on my lap or <laughs> stuff like that, you know? And, um, and so I, I was saying that to say my son, Danico, um, I started his foundation with his mother, Tasha, it's called Unique and Gifted, but you gotta remember, man, over the, the past decades, a, a lot of people have family members and kids that's disabled, but they would keep them hid from the world because you never really know if people are gonna be cruel or, or how that may go, you know? And again, it, it had to be the man up above. I, I, I introduced mine to the world to where 
other artists started feeling comfortable letting it be known to where I remember I did, um, I got a day in Houston called Special Needs Day with me and him. And I was just randomly, I was like, man, it's a lot of Special Needs family. And a lot of them, you know, they, they be in their own world and their own corner, you know, because they don't want to come out people looking and doing all that. So we did a Special Needs Day where I brought animals out fire department, um, police department, rides, animals, um, Iceman Nick the Jeweler brought jewelry out to let all the kids put on a high price jewelry, but over 5,000 families. Like you yeah. don't, you wouldn't even know it was, that's a whole nother world. You, right. I'm not saying 5,000 people, I'm saying 5,000 families. Mm. So you can only imagine the, 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 the impact and the things that, that go on. But definitely my kids, because it's like each one of them special in they in their own way. Even now with my daughter, so this is my only girl. So now I'm at a point where I'm really trying to be overly hands on with her full time, you know? And um Do you parent differently to a girl? Um, you know, believe it or not, I've never I've never whooped none of my kids. I don't even know how to whip my kids, to be honest mm. with you. Um I'm not, I don't really get up. My kids ain't really bad like that. Um, but definitely my daughter, she definitely one of the ones that I don't give a damn what you say, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. And <laughs> like if I was to tell her, don't knock that glass over, she may wait a few seconds and then <laughs> she gonna go in there, she gonna find a way just to make sure it go off that table. <laughs> and she know I'm not gonna really do nothing. Cause uh -huh. you know, I can talk to my boys and they'll be like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna chill. I don't wanna make pops mad at her. I ain't really knowing still and feeling her like that, mm. you know? She, she so. sound like all my kids. <laughs> she, <definitely. laughs> she, she sound like all my kids. All of them be trying to try me. Are you different me. with your girls? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you love them the same, but like, I feel like I'm harder on my boys than I am with my daughters. Uh, in terms of being ready for the real world, it's gonna be tough. I mean, I also tell my, my daughters about the same thing, but... It's tough for us out there too, Yeah, you know? it is, it is, you know what I mean? But. It's like with your daughters, it's like almost like you take them on dates to show them what it's like to, 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 to have a good man or a mm. good male figure in your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Show, show like the things that you do for your wife, you know, whether it's, you know, open the door or, or try to make life easier, or, you know, giving, you know, your wife a hug in, in front of them and just those type of things that just show them what love is and and then try to be there for them. And in terms of like chasing, chasing their goals and talk about life, like, look, you gotta be careful. Not everybody's gonna be all the way for you. For you. you gotta figure out who is happy to see you succeed, who makes you laugh, who do you enjoy being around, and who's doing good with their life. Like, you, you try your Choose best. Choose your environment. So, yeah, you that, just that, try your best. That's all you can do, and pray. Pray that, yeah. you know, it all works out for the for the best. But I, I am a little bit more tough on my boys. So you have this, this way of thinking. You inspire people. It feels like you mentor people. Did anyone do that for you? You know, I think that's one of the main reasons why I do be there for people as much as I did, right? Um, coming up, when I was younger, my I think one of the people that I used to look up to the most was my older brother. He was already incarcerated doing two life sentences, you know? So coming up, we all bump our head, make mistakes, and um, I'm not one of the ones, you know, when you're a young man, you, you we all get to a point we gotta wanna be a man, so. I can't go crying to mama when certain situations happen. So a lot of times it was just me and my partners or, or me and my, my cousins and I have to figure it out, but I didn't have nobody that was like, yeah, this ain't it, or go do this, or you know what I'm saying? So I had to figure it out. And at times when I was going through it the most and I couldn't go run to her, I just had to take it on the chin, you know? But I always told myself, man, if I ever get in a situation where I'm in a better situation than what I'm in now, I'm going to be there for people as much as I can because I know what it feel like to feel like it's you against the world all the time. And even to this day, it'd be feeling like that with me in certain situations, you know? When you do feel it's you against the world, a lot of times that leads to us crashing out. But if you if you able to know that somebody slightly care, it give you a, a little more incentive not to just give up or quit right there and there, you know what I'm saying?
so with this like young generation of artists, right? And again, correct me if I'm wrong, but some of them are wild, right? Is that are there like some that you kind of try to take under your wing to try to? I, anybody I'm been around that. Nine out of ten been under my wing and they'll listen, they'll respect, because they know I'm always giving the real. Right. The thing is, even if you really listen to my music, I'm giving you real life. I'm not telling you what to do, what not to do. I'm just telling you what I done been through and the results. Why a lot of artists in general be the way that they be because they do feel people don't care. They feel like they feel like it's them against the world. They feel like. When all fails or come crumbling down, it's just gonna be them or they ain't gonna have nothing or nobody. So sometimes when they find somebody who genuinely do care, they tend to gravitate towards that, you know what I'm saying? One of the biggest things in the industry is insecurity. People don't want nobody to take their place. You know what I'm saying? They ain't confident enough to get out there and hustle and make it work. So a lot of times the artists do, they, they need somebody to show that they give a damn, you know? We deal with that. I was gonna say, insecurity is crazy in sports too. Exact same, yeah. parallels there. And some, some of the old heads, you come into the locker room, they're like, I'm not giving up my position. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the best experience that music has given you? So I never smoke and drink in my life, right? Everybody had their go-to, my go-to is music. That's, it gave me an outlet to be able to vent and let out what I'm really going through and feeling without having to talk to somebody or without having to mm -hmm. be crying or just going through it. That, it. It just gave me a lane in so many ways. And um, I feel God put me in that position because the way he got me to where people understand and love the things that I do, they were introduced to me more so through the music. That was the, the cool factor that opened the door for mm -hmm. me to do what I was doing. So everything with music. Is there an interaction, like some sort of conversation that you you had when you were coming up with an artist, an established artist that maybe changed the course of of your your path? You're talking about inspired as far as before you? my time, or people I have relationships now? Yeah, now. So, but so people I have relationships now, like I'm close to a lot of my brothers, you know, from um, from Ti. I mean, everybody knows my brother to to J. Cole, you know, when I when I got shot, J. Cole instantly came and got me and took me overseas to get me just away, you know what I'm saying? Um, like, all my relationships with, with, with all my bros, like, we, it's it's always been that, like, we motivate each other, you know, and it's not even just rappers, you know, it, it, it could be family members, my own little brothers and them, like, it's just, it's always been that. But I think a lot of us, we just, we motivate each other because they achieving things that make me proud. And then as they watch me do things I'm doing, I make them proud. So it just go hand in hand. What about growing up? Like, who you looked who you looked up to? And then like when you first got into the rap game and that like kind of like showed you the way, showed you the ropes, helped so you kind of find your voice? I was, again, I was, at that time, I was looking up just to my older brother. You know, when you're younger, you look up to your dad, your older brother. Or, yeah if you got an OG or maybe a big cousin or something like that. Um, I was looking up to my brother, but I always been a firm thing to where I had to figure it out on my own. Um, I think things started turning for me. Uh, my brother, DJ Screw, he ended up giving us outlets through his tapes. You know, at that time, that was our form of radio mm -hmm. to where we seen like people actually they listening to us, not just all of us are sitting in this room, people who ain't from here mm -hmm. singing my raps, you know, and stuff like that. And I think, man, moments like that, it was, that was the stuff that was more impactful that that, that motivated me. Um, not just watching people as a whole and music, just cause I, I always love music, you know. Um, you gravitate more to the West Coast music? versus East Coast? More of the street side of Houston and the West Coast, yeah. Um, but East Coast too, like I'm, I'm one of the few artists to this day that can jump in any lane, you know what I'm saying? So I, I where would I you to everybody. Where would you place my, my song? <laughs> <laughs> what genre? Where would you, where would you place that? 
He said with Bow Wow. Lil uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bow Wow, too. Not even nah. a big Bow Wow, Lil Bow Wow. Nah, I'm saying, but you know, it's crazy. Bow Wow, Bow Wow is my brother. I was just with him uh, a couple weeks ago. Like, he has some, the stuff you hear, like, see, people tend to think Bow Wow, you know, they, they thought of him as a kid, but like, when you hear some of the, the stuff he on now, it's definitely something super dope. But, so what um, he's saying is you disrespect him, little Bow Wow, now no, with that. I, 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 I went, I am saying, about one thing now. about me, they know I'm not going to ever let nobody disrespect my partners. <laughs> when, even if they're not here, I'm going to stand up for them. But going back to you, I would say, <laughs> I, I would say that's more of a, more of a Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go, man. Damn. <laughs> Damn. But I'm saying, I'm saying, look, hey. but you, you talking to the women and you going for the, they just give you that vacation. Yeah, oh, it, give you that, it give you the open, the open button down shirt doing your side with the flip flops on. Oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Damn. Oh. So you never, never drunk, never smoked. So the reason I never drank and smoked was because I deal with everything head up. When a lot of my people, when they would drink or smoke, it wasn't to be cool. It was because they were going through it, and that would ease their mind for the time. So if you can get through life unmedicated? Then yeah, you... so for them, they would be fine at that moment. But right. when it wears off, you that reality is sinking it. back yeah, in. They're not addressing the issue. So with me, it's. However the fuck it come right then and there, it can't get no worse than that. So right. I take it for what it is, you know, uh -huh. like, but I'm the same way with medicine. Like, so when I got shot, um, I probably took pain medicine a week and a half, two weeks max. And it was just like, if I can make it through one night without it, then Clearly. I'll be able to do two nights. And you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And that's so, another reason, like dealing with, just talking about that, like God's on your side, like to be able to like, those type of situations, having a guardian angel. Where'd you get yeah, shot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got shot in my back. Um, when I got shot in my back, it shot on my shoulder blade and then it spent in my, the bullet. It actually, it spent and it set my shoulder. If you look on YouTube, you see me actually taking the bullet out myself. Mm. And it falls in the sink. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, but I always knew, right? I always knew, man. So I got a book coming out, right, that just tells my life story. So it, people, how people have things called they would say misunderstood. Mine's called myth understood. And the book, what's unique about it is, it's talking to people one-on-one -on -one and it's asking them what was the myth and the thing that you heard about Trey before you met him? And what was the reality of it mm. after being around him? So you're going to hear and see a lot of different things. In a lot of situations that I've been through in life that they'll tell in this book, is stuff that definitely I, I could not be here. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But in every situation, I end up. You find a way. Yeah, yeah. Not even that I find a way. I think it necessarily he found a way. Because when I got shot in, the, in my back, it's that's directly behind my heart and it shattered my shoulder blade. So all I had to do was just keep going mm -hmm. straight. It didn't. You know what I'm saying? So whatever he got planned for me, I'm just Walking moving in. the way he need me to move. You know. I'm just rolling with it at, at mm -hmm. this moment, you know. What I was going to ask you when I mentioned the smoking and the drinking, I was wondering, uh, performing, does that give you your high? Is that your high in life? Yeah, uh, that, uh, not even just the performing. I think just being able to do music and get it out. Um, when I'm on stage, I black out. The crazy thing, you can see me, I can be laid back here, I don't talk. But on stage, I'm going to give you a show. You know, and they be like, well, damn, I ain't even know you can move like that. But it's not on no dance shit. I see you perform, actually. Yeah, not on no dance shit. I'm just saying, like, I, I get to it. I saw you you perform with Clint in yeah. uh, that MLS event. It was like yeah, we did, a, we did a thing with, with FIFA. FIFA. Now it's yeah. EAFC. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just a trade, though. He's always, like, if something's going on, he, he come through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. that's all I can say about him. So I appreciate everything over the years. and. Shoot, he's a big bro, man. I'm happy to say I know you and I'm inspired by you, man. Nah, you, man do you feel like me. you'll miss that at some point if you choose to retire from the game? Do you, do you feel like you'll miss performing? With the music? Yeah. The um, music or what you're giving when you're on stage, I guess, yeah. I think, honestly, I think God gonna always keep some type of entertainment yeah. tied to me. Because, you know, from the music to now, 
doing movies and other stuff. Like he just, that's what get the people to me. Right. And then at the same time, he's able to show other sides of me that, because believe it or not, I got all different, I got a yeah. weird fan base, right? You have people who strictly know me for the streets, people who strictly love me for the music. Then you got people who strictly love me for just the community. Mm -hmm. You got people who strictly love me for being the father that I am. So my shit is just, it's all over the place, mm -hmm. but it works. So now when I do shows, it can be the weirdest dynamic of a crowd, you know, because <laughs> different people coming to see me for whatever reason they coming to see me. But that's also another blessing, you know what I'm saying? Also, you're an entrepreneur. Talk about, like, the bump box well, and yeah, the other platform. That, with that, that that's, um, I'm one of the owners of Bump Box. I don't know if y'all seen the, the radios that everybody come out with. Um, um, Looks like Super the original Bowl. boom box, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Super but the Bowl, speakers are way better. Yeah. They're walking yeah. out with the radio. They got, they got like smaller ones, bigger ones. That we just, we launched in the headphones. Um, are you supplying those to teams and stuff for them to come out with, or is that just kind of like we people just gravitate to it? Now, it's dope. We, now we supply them, but the thing is, organically, people are just supporting it, you know, oh, on yeah? their own. Uh, if you look in the Barbie movie, we in the Barbie movie. Um, of course, through UFC, shout out Dana White and the whole team over there. Like we, our box is just at this point it it can carry itself. Like we built it up. Um, now you know we own the rights. Any corn holes that's out there, if they have a speaker on it, we own that that patent oh, part of it. So CBS, y'all can get us one of those too. You can support Trey and get us all one of those. <laughs> oh yeah, all <I>, <laughs> Clint got to do is just send the address. I, I got y'all. Um, no, they gonna pay because they didn't pay for the, <laughs> they didn't pay for the bill last night when we had drinks after the game. They gonna they gonna support the cause. They buy it. Oh, so we man. got that to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Knew that was coming. That one of the biggest things, and I give it to y'all first. I haven't announced it um, yet. One of the biggest things I just did a partnership that's gonna be real big to me is called Crisis Flood Bag. So a bag, one bag. If it's the big bag, everything in this room can fit in here, including the couches. And once that bag is zipped, it can sit on the water for two weeks. Wow. So even if you leave your house, the outside may be messed up, water may be in there, but the things that are priceless that can make a person damn near want to give up are still be there. I know, gotta, know what another good idea would be? I think if, if in like certain areas where you know there's like flooding and stuff, yeah, it's like, like, I'm, I'm like surviving, to like surviving stuff in a bag too. Like, like something to keep you warm like if if you're like freezing like hypothermia like matches and well this bag isn't for for you to sit in yeah it's like just this stuff. is yeah 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 but definitely that would be dope but at the same sense of that you if when it's getting that bad you need to get out of there <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, i'm just saying i'm just saying <laughs> next to his no, bag no no he lied to say bag next to bag no i i know what you're saying he's floating hey y'all need to keep floating in the water like this he got a candle like this game. 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 what i'm talking about is yeah. having something i don't have to leave i'm talking about having something beforehand you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Certain areas, you notice a trend that they get hit, hit harder so, by So the thing is, right? it's, I'm, so making it like, it. I'm making like it like a survival thing. Right, I'm making it a, uh, like a disaster preparation type thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because that's what I'm talking about. People need it. You know, the, the Florida's <laughs> need it. You, you just all the areas that you know anything about water definitely yeah. need it. Before you go, we did want to ask you about 2026 World Cup. How many games is it in, in Dallas? It's nine games, is it, right? Yep. It's seven in Dallas Houston. Or is it coming to Houston? Seven in Houston, Houston nine in seven. Dallas. Yeah, it's coming to huh? Houston too. Houston has games too. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Dallas. It, it, so I guess I'm just interested. Uh, is that something you'd be like Definitely. down to go through? Definitely. And then it'd be dope anyway, because if they bring something like with you there, that would be even dope because it just it organically just fall into play. It'll be a proper version of Clint. He'll be working for Fox. He'll be buttoned up. Oh, hell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's trying to throw people under the bus. That's crazy. I just performed for the, uh, the rugby team. I'm just learning about that. Uh -huh. I don't really, I don't fully understand rugby? them like that. But yeah. Uh, From where? The Houston Sabercats. I oh, just really? did halftime for them, so yeah. OK. Yeah, so I'm, you watch I'm the game? trying to learn. Yeah, rugby I was ain't no trying joke. to, yeah. They definitely look like they get tossed around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, so this is pretty much we're wrapping season one of Kicking It. Yeah. Season two production is asking me, would would you be down to do a new theme song? We need a new theme song. Oh, that's Clint, easy. That's done. You maybe maybe even get <laughs> Lil Bow Wow. The Hawaiian <laughs> rapper. The Hawaiian <laughs> rapper Mo. Uh, yeah. M to but the Aloha yeah. Mo. <laughs> but now you can tell them that's done. I only got a. I, I, Yesterday's price ain't today's price. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it ain't for me either. But for Aloha Mo. <laughs> Somebody got to pay for them button-down shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Damn. We appreciate your time so much. I know a person like you, time is valuable. So no, we are so grateful. Good. Thank you so much for coming through. Oh, we appreciate you. Can I give you a hug? Thank yeah. you for your time, man. <laughs> Very cool to meet you. Appreciate you. Big bro. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. Hope you had a good time. Damn, bro. Hawaii? <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> All the places. Hawaii? Damn. Yeah. Thank you for watching. If you liked this episode of Kicking It, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to enjoy more raw and unfiltered content from me and the boys.